travel trailer down in Kingsville and this is never too old adventure so the adventure for today is going to be making granny's fried apple pies there's a little bit of a story behind this so let me just share that with you real quick uh, my mother who has passed away now used to make fried apple pies and she used to fry them in the skillet and uh, they were just uh, wonderful absolutely delicious so today we're going to try to replicate those fried pies and hope they turn out just a half as good as mom's used to be because they were the best. Uh, so to get started today we're going to be using the uh, all-purpose uh, flour, some Crisco, some water, and some salt. And what we're going to do we're going to make the dough first. So as we move along here uh, we'll try to share with you what we know and maybe some of the good old times we used to have. Um, first off we need to put in Let's check out the recipe here to be sure. Looks like our recipe calls for uh, two cups of all-purpose flour. So I've got a half a cup measure here in the travel trailer, and that's all we have. So we're going to put four of these in there. And there's one, two, three. and four and then it says we need uh, a teaspoon of salt get our salt out here all right we've got a teaspoon of salt in there We'll mix that up a little bit. It says to sift this all together. I don't have a sifter, so we're just going to have to go with what we got here. And that ought to be good. Looks like we need to get a half a cup of shortening now. Now I'm using the Crisco shortening here. Um, you can use whatever kind of shortening you want, I guess, but it says to put a half a cup in here. So I'm going to get me a spoon out of here. And it says it for it to be chilled. I'm going to assume that means just solid. If it's supposed to be cold, I've already messed it up. So. Oops, I went in the floor. That's all right. We'll clean her up. That looks about right right there. It says to use a pastry blender. Let me clean this up out of the floor real quick so I don't smosh it all over. My wife will be upset with me if I leave a mess, I guarantee you. So I'm going to go the old-fashioned way. Get a knife and a fork, and I'm going to cut that in. Yeah, you can always just use your hands and crumble it on in there. And what we're looking for in here is a kind of a crumbly base in our flour. I don't know if you can 
can see that in there. Use a fork to mash it around a little bit. Now I've tried to make dough before, but I've never had any success at it, so I hope this recipe is going to help me get it done. Uh, Mom used to always do hers just by, you know, pinch of this, pinch of that, a little more flour here, a little more water, whatever it took to make it just right. I don't know what it is about the ladies back in the uh, older generation, but they had a knack for just fixing things. I can remember not only my mom, but my grandmother, you know, she used to make biscuits, and oh my goodness, I wake up to smelling biscuits in the morning, oh, that's good stuff right there, and she used to always make them by scratch, she didn't have a recipe, she just put a little bit in there, and you know, she used to keep that old bacon fat on top of the stove, and uh, she'd put a little bit of that in there, and them biscuits were the best, we used to call them sawmill biscuits, we used to have sawmill biscuits and gravy, and that really... That was some good times back then. Lived in a little old house in Three Rivers and, and uh, Granny would always fix biscuits in the morning to go with whatever, whether it was gravy or bacon and eggs or whatever it was, she'd always fix up some biscuits. And usually she'd fix some up enough that there would be at least three or four left in the afternoon. So when I got home from school, I'd grab me one of them biscuits and hopefully somebody left a piece of bacon with it. And I'd put that piece of bacon or sausage or whatever it was in that biscuit and uh, have me a wonderful little snack after school. Let's see where we got to go next. It says cut that in there until the mixture resembles coarse crumbles. Well, we're getting there. Got that all cut in there now. There's a couple big spots in there we need to cut through. All right, looks like we're working there. Then we're gonna need a half a cup of cold water. And we're gonna be adding that one tablespoon at a time. Let me get some cold water out of the fridge. I need a half a cup of this. All right, there's a half a cup. Now we're supposed to put that in there a tablespoon at a time. I'm just going to use this spoon right here that we use for the for the Crisco. And let's see. And mix it with a fork. Okay, we've been using the fork, so we ought to be good. I'm going to do this one tablespoon at a time, it says. Well, it's going to be a mess before it's all over with, I'm afraid. Yeah, it looks like it's starting to come together as it crumble. That's what they're talking about. Now, me, me I, I'm moving it. I really don't know what I'm doing, but we're giving it a whirl anyway. I'm going to get this flour off the sides and make me a little hole down in there, the middle here to put my water in. Now, that uh, you just see that on the baking shows and the pastry shows. They... They make a little mound and then they put, whoops, I put two in there that time. I hope it didn't run it. But uh, they put in that, make a little mound out of the flour and then they uh, go ahead and poke a hole in the middle of it and then put some uh, water down in there or whatever they're going to make, biscuits or whatever. And, and uh, they put it in there like that. Looks like we're getting pretty good here. Still got to get a little bit more in here and put in some more water. Well, it seems like a pain in the bobo, but we're going to make it happen. And just mix all this stuff up. I don't know about you, but, you know, back when I was a kid, I have good memories. Uh, you know, some of my grandchildren and my children, I hope that they have good memories. That's one of the things about family that, that you need to... Uh, work on i think and i've tried to work on it as as uh, my family has come along and and that's build good memories i mean we've taken some trips as family and and uh, they've turned out really nice and and uh, they've just been really good a good time and it doesn't you know it doesn't cost a lot i mean we uh we can build a fire out in the backyard at the house there and and sit around that fire and uh 
just have a good time. You're talking about old times most of the time, talking about our experiences in life and and just, you know, just coming together as a family. You know, that's one thing that has truly, uh, I think, hurt America today is uh, the lack of family. And, uh, you know, I'm not... I'm not here talking about, you know, if you happen to be a single mom or a single dad or something like that. I'm not talking about the numbers in the family. What I'm talking about is the uh, emotional and uh, spiritual part of being a family. You have to pull together. You have to uh, know one another. And, and, you know, that's just something that comes with, uh, with time and uh, putting in time visiting with each other. Uh, today we're spread out all across the United States in different places and uh, you know a lot of it we take time to FaceTime on the phone or or video chat on the phone but uh, we never go and visit too much anymore fortunately I'm pretty close to my kids and and uh, we take time to visit and just time to be be together uh, uh, and I think that's a good thing for the family in a whole. Uh, a lot of times it's unable to, you're unable to do that, but I would encourage you as we put our last bit of water in there to uh, do your best to, you know, get close to your family. You know, uh, family is one thing you're not going to give up. I don't care if you don't like them or whatever. They're still your family. Uh, you know, and, and you just have to develop develop that relationship uh so you can uh become closer i think uh again i think that's just what's wrong with america today is we've we've lost sight of what family is and and what uh morals and and uh virtues that uh, we used to hold uh almost sacred or well we did hold them sacred we had uh uh you know things that we did that we uh surely wouldn't uh you know, do today, I, I, there's just all kinds of stuff, you know. Used to, we used to make uh, hand crank ice cream out on the front porch and, you know, invite the neighbors over and, you know, just have a good time. Well, you know, today in today's world, most of the time people drive into their garage, hit the garage door uh, mechanism, close the garage door, call out for pizza or some kind of Uber delivered supper, and then they never even know who their neighbors are. Uh, so we're just in a technology type situation where uh, people rely on their phone, they rely on this, they rely on that. And uh, I'm actually writing a book now on dystopian apocalypse and what happens if we have an, an EMP and... and um, you know, what are you going to do without your phone or electricity or anything like that? I'm going to take this out of the bowl now. Looks like we're getting pretty close to what we need to be. And then I'm going to knead this a little bit. Just kind of mash it out. I saw an old chuck wagon guy last night on the uh, YouTube that uh, he said you mash it down and push it forward. Mash it down and push it forward. Mash it down and push it forward. And then fold it over and do the same thing again. He said what that does is that gets that lard or grease or whatever you're cooking with mixed in and flattened out. He said that it doesn't leave any knots in there. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're just going to flip it around. Seems like this dough turned out pretty good because it's not sticky. Coming right off the cabinet, coming off and not getting on my hands. Let's see, and after we do this, don't you just hate it when your phone closes down and you need it and you got to go back in, put your password or put your finger back on there? And it says, when the flour mixture is moistened, gather it into a ball, wrap it in plastic, and refrigerate for 30 minutes. Well, imagine that. I don't have no plastic. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to improvise. I'm going to use a plastic bag from HEB. Wrap it up in, and then put it in the, the fridge. And we're still mashing this out a little bit. We'll make sure it's all good. I'm going to try to get this all mixed up here. 
And then later on, we're gonna have to roll this out, so I'm sure that's why it needs to be cooled off a little bit. Make it up into a little ball. Well, it's not a little ball, but it is a ball. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna stick it in here. And I'm gonna wrap it up in this H-E-B bag. And it says to chill it, so we're gonna put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And then we're gonna continue on with something else in this recipe. We still gotta fix up the apples and end up rolling this out in here in a little while after it cools off. Hey guys, here we are back, Never Too Old Adventures. Don't forget to look down below, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you uh, click a like and also reach over to that little icon bell and click it and then click all so you get the upcoming videos. Uh, we're fixing to go ahead and uh, finish the afternoon off. We've still got to make our, our fried, the actual filling for our pies. We got the dough that we put in to chill and it should be ready to go. And our recipe calls for us to uh, a quarter cup of white sugar and a eighth of a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon. Let's see here. Get my sugar out here. Just a second. All right. This is a half a cup, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this about halfway, maybe a little bit more. I like my fried pies a little sweeter. I'm going to pour that in there. Then it says an eighth of a teaspoon. Let's see here. That's going to be a little bitty bugger. That's, that's about one right there, a teaspoon. Alright, come on out of there, cinnamon. Well, with what's in the bowl and what's in the, the spoon, I think that ought to be pretty good. <laughs> You know, this is not my forte uh, as far as, uh, you know, mixing stuff up and baking things and frying up stuff. Now, I like to cook. I love the barbecue. All right, we got that all mixed up in there. Let me take a look at that right there. It's kind of mixed up. And it says to take our apples, which I've got in here. You might have to move the camera. Yeah, I went ahead and peeled and sliced up the apples, and it says to put them in the saucepan, about like that. Always like to taste stuff, make sure it's still good. Let's see. Put them in there and get them going. Combine the sugar and the cinnamon, pour over the apples, and toss to coat. Cook covered in a saucepan. All right. Let's see here. We'll put that in there. There we go. Toss those around a little bit. Let's get us a lid for that. go all right we got our apples in they're gonna be be simmering up here and getting them we got to turn that fire down just a little bit 
That looks good. We'll cook those up. And we're going to cook those until they're soft. And then we're going to mash them up. But while we're doing that, we're going to kind of clean up a little bit around. All right, look at that. flour down. Hope I don't make too big a mess. Mom will be mad at me. I think I'm going to try rolling a small piece out first. Roll this out enough to get at least two more spots out of it. Well, I hope that uh, you're going to have a great holiday at your house. I know if these fried pies turn out good, we're going to have a good one here. Let's see. I don't think I can get another one out of that. But you know what? If I fold this like this, I think though I need to add a little water in it so it sticks. Oh, goodness. That's probably a little too much, but... We we'll just have to go with that. Mix it in with this other dry stuff here. Kind of knead it out a little. Put a little more flour on it. Looks like that recipe of four cups of flour is going to make about, well, just about four little pies. Oh, getting a roll, getting a rolling pin all stuck up here. Remember, I was telling you about my granny. My granny, she, she had a rolling pin, and I don't know whatever happened to it, but that was a good old rolling pin. She used to roll with it all the time. And if you messed with it, you'd get the rolling pin for sure. <laughs> right across your bum. Granny was always good in the kitchen, always good with the kids. Always want to make sure everybody was happy. And that's one thing I wish for you and your family this this holiday season is for all the happiness in the world. You know, we've got it made pretty well here in the, the United States. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bad things that are going on for sure, but, uh, you know, ultimately... We're probably the best country in the world. I know that's why most people are trying to get in here instead of trying to get into uh, Iran or Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that to live. And it's simply because we're the one of the best nations in the world as far as I'm concerned. You may have your own ideas about that and we won't get into any kind of politics, but I hope that you are active in America doing things, you know, and a lot of it starts right in your community. And uh, so I would encourage you to get out in your community. Say hello to your neighbors. My wife told me the other day, just, I think it was yesterday, we're down here in this travel trailer uh, RV resort down here. And I was telling her about a gentleman that he just came in from Minnesota. And I, you know, I'd talked to him. And she said, Holly, you just, you talk to everybody. And I said, well, I try to. I, I try to be friendly with folks that I meet, and I would hope that they would be friendly with, you know, me, and so, anyway, we got to talking, and, you know, he said they come down here to Texas because it's a friendly state, and, 
you know, it's just too cold up there in Minnesota right now. So, you know, we welcome most people down here. Yeah, well, look at there. We're going to turn these over like this right here with some filling inside of them. Then we're going to cook them. So I think we're doing, doing a fine job, although there's only four of them. Okay, guys, here we are. Uh, we're back to the final step of making the pies. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pie dough, lay it out here. I'm going to put a pan over here, and I'm going to put a little butter in the bottom of it, just a little. Now this is where I deviate a little bit from the recipe, and I hope it's, uh, it's going to be okay, is I'm just going to fry mine and a little bit of butter on, on the stove top on this this uh, uh, skillet here so I hope that's going to work out for us we got our apples here that we cooked up sauteed a little bit it says to uh, take a little water and moisten around the edges of your your dough so we want to do that make it a little sticky then we're going to put a little bit of filling in here I don't know exactly how much to put, so I'm just going to start with that. About half a big spoonful. I'm going to fold it over. And we're just going to mash out the edges with the fork to seal it up. Like that ought to do. Put that in there. There's another one out here. I have to be careful on my filling here. It looks like I may run out before I run out of pastries here. Moisten that up a little bit on the edge so it sticks. Closing it up with the fork. There we go. Alright. We're going to let those cook in there. We're going to get, we got them over a slow flame. So I hope that's what we need to do. Now when my granny used to make them, my mom, the boy's granny, she it, it had little black spots on the outside where she cooked them in a cast iron skillet. Well, I don't have a cast iron skillet, so we're just going to do the best we can with what we got. I think we'll be okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these out here so I know how much filling i got left. Well, that ought to do her for that one. Let's try these apples. Oh, that's nice. Oh, got to put a little water on them so the edges will seal. Well, all right. Let's take a look at these. Oh, got to get the spatula out. You know, I've enjoyed doing this, but I don't know whether I do it very often. I, hats off to you ladies that spend all day in the kitchen baking and, and doing things for your holidays. Well, they're getting a little golden brown on the bottom of them there. I think I'll put a little more butter in there, make sure they don't stick. Just a little, little smidge in there.
Well guys, here is the finished product. Uh, a nice apple pie. We're gonna try it and see what happens. Those are good. Thank you, Granny, for the fried apple pie idea. Y'all be safe out there, and thank you so much for tuning in to Never Too Old Adventures. Make sure you reach down there and hit that subscribe button. Give us the old thumbs up for the like. And most of all, hit that icon bell that you can get to our next video. Thanks again. Have a great one. We'll see you out there on that next adventure.